You've got all this anti-gypsy sentiment from politicians and the right-wing press, the local press, the local t radio stations have phone-ins. Do you think gypsies should be allowed to live in the area? You know, phone in and tell us what you think. You've got bigot radio phoning in. They don't do this to anybody else. Go to see what they do to travellers when they chuck them off their land. You will not believe it. They smash their homes up, they burn their things, they trash the place, and in Chelmsford they even sprayed the place with pig shit. Excuse my language. We have a few friends that come, but not many people stop because most people in this country are afraid of us. They think that, well, I don't know what they think, but not many people stop other than to hurl abuse. We have friends, they stop. Hopefully we'll have a friend coming round soon. It's a hard life on the road. <laughs> Jeff's a very good friend. He's a different kind of traveller. I'm a gypsy. Um, this has been... I have no choice. This is my way of life. But Jeff himself has chosen this way. He found that he was happier on the road than being yeah. tied down... In houses. In houses. And so he does this. Yeah, I've never really slept in a house. I slept in one... Well, this year I've went, slept in one in France. Show off. Oh, three <laughs> days in a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All strange things, running water, <laughs> flush toilets, flush toilets, and shower rooms, yeah. and loads and loads of water. <laughs> Sorry, I was only joking. That's not what I'm oh, is it? Oh, well, I'm not in shock. In a house, you don't know if it's raining or not. You can't hear the, hear the rain. In a caravan, in a trailer, you, you can hear the, the wind, the rain on the roof. The wind rocks the caravan. It's, you, you're much more in nature. You, you, you're much more in touch with what's around you. That's something you lose when you're in a house. Yeah. You, you're not aware of the elements. Of course, I really ought to be doing this on an open fire in the woods and with pheasants and stuff like that. But it's much, much easier now to go to the supermarket and buy stuff that's already made. Although, it doesn't mean we can't do it, I do quite enjoy doing it, but it's, sometimes it's really nice to have to pluck and gut an animal. Well, times are moving and we've got to move with them. Years ago, it used to be the job, when you lived in a horse in a wagon, that the woman would move the wagon in the day, and the man would be out to work. But because of the nature of the way they lived, they only had little stoves inside that only kept the caravans warm, generally. So, most of the cooking was done outside over an open fire. And to be honest, most of what got cooked was either what they'd picked up along the way and was generally cooked in pots or swinging skillets, which is like a big metal cast pan which on a, uh, an arm, a metal arm that went over it. And you could fry on that. And all that was done over an open fire, but most dishes were just, we always nicknamed them slop. Because they were runny stuff and it was normally pulses, what was in the field. You get a lot of farm work and whatever you got from your farm work would go into it, what meat you could find along the way, what you could get off the local farmers. Travellers truly were not opportunistic, I would say, but they, the, the nature of the way they lived meant they could only get what was local to the area. I find time just vanishes so quick, especially recently. Always doing repairs, because if you're always on the move, you're always breaking stuff. So it's the constant fix it, constant break it. On it carry on again. For a lorry this size, road use is great, but something like this, if you pull onto a field with a caravan like we've got, you often get stuck in the mud, the trailer's very heavy, the wheels aren't uh, just spinning. Still... Put those, not on the front wheel, I know we've put them on the front wheel, that's just to check the size. They actually will fit on the back wheels, which means no more getting stuck in the mud.
Be careful down the steps then. Go on. Careful, careful. One, two. Jeff, Jeff, can you make sure it doesn't go on the road? Okay. Um, living, living here is fun at the moment, the children are at school, but it's not ideal. I'm very close to the road. Yeah. At the moment I'm getting a lot of aggression from, from people driving past. We've had stones through the window, we've had stones thrown at the car. It would be nice to move and, and people like Jeff here is good because he brings the things that makes it easier to move. I don't know where I'm going to go yet. Maybe go abroad. Left or right? <laughs> yeah. Up hill or... There's a road that way and there's a road that way. Which way do I go? <laughs> I'm proud of who I am and what I do and I want them to be proud of who they are and what they do. But I want them to have the freedom to choose. <sighs> so, many, so many children grow up in their parents' footsteps and don't have that choice. He has the choice whether to stay living like this or go into the house, and that's important to me. Again, it comes with education. I value the fact that my children go to school. It's important. I missed out a lot of schooling. Schooling is important now that you cannot get by without being able to read and write. So we are fighting to stay here so that my children can finish their education, knowing that the council could at any point come down and evict me. I still would like my children to finish their education. Yeah, when they're helping me and I haven't. We got some friends at school. Well, and me, Harris and Anna. Nat. And Jake's mum. They are getting <coughs> the car candy. Uh, you're going to jump up and go. When my first daughter was born, my, my partner at that time said we should bring her up like everybody else. We shouldn't be different. And uh, I think I spent a sum total of about two weeks in the house before seeing a head doctor. It's, it's hard to explain that, going back to something I said earlier, it's a mental freedom. It's, it's, it's not a physical freedom, it's a mental freedom. And that's hard. It is hard. When, when that's taken away from you, as being in a house does, you, you do find yourself very enclosed and squashed. The papers always use the word gypsies. You know, whether it be with a small G or a big G. Well, whether a person's in the caravan or not. You know, the person could be from the local housing estate. Yeah. Because they can't afford the price of a house. <laughs> doesn't make them gypsies. It doesn't make them gypsies and it doesn't give them... But it, again, this is getting back to the older issue. This, this is the, the problem with travellers full stop. There's forever arguing, as we are now, or not arguing, but discussing the fact that who is a gypsy, who isn't a gypsy, that's not the issue. Like, what, what the hell does that matter? You know, At the end of the day, you're all on the road. Like the government knows this, and it knows what he's doing. But it's pitting traveller against traveller. That, that's why they're doing it. In the 80s, now, I, I was brought up staunch gypsy, I, I lived in the chromie trailers, did the old field work and everything else. In the 80s we got the peace movement, what did they call them? New Age Gypsies. That was it, gypsies. So straight away, that's put my back up, my family's back up, we were anti-traveller, we were anti-New Age traveller. But that, that, was, that was propaganda, that was putting travellers against travellers. And that's, that's what's happening, travellers just spend more time arguing amongst themselves than actually getting things sorted. If travellers could just put one head together, go to the government and say, right, OK, we're all travellers, we're all going to want something slightly different, but at the end of the day, we want the freedom to do what we do. Right. Without the fear of prosecution, without the fear of reprisals from vigilantes and everything else, we just want a little yeah, bit of tolerance. You would always, I always call it the jealousy. No. Yeah. Yeah, again, here we go, jealousy. I pay more in tax than what a lot of people earn a week. Yeah. You know, but they won't accept that. As far as people out there are concerned, I'm a scrounging, they think I'm signing on and they think I'm not working, but I am, you know, and that's, people don't see that side of things. Well, they tend to ignore it, don't they, you know? Well, this is it. It's like there's... Yeah, of course I pay my taxes, of course all my vehicles are legal. If your vehicles weren't legal, you wouldn't be able to drive on the road. Not anymore. Once upon a time, fair enough, but not anymore. You have to.